Okay, students, hello, and welcome to Flip Classroom on the Writers of the Northern Renaissance. Uh, what you guys want to do is have out your Cornell notes that say the Reformation notes, and uh, today what we're going to go over is I'm going to go over the effects of the printing press. I'm going to give you a couple of uh, Renaissance writers, and we're going to take a look at the world of Shakespeare in today's class. So make sure you have those notes out, get those notes down in your Cornell notes, and be prepared to study for the exam from them. All right, so the effects of the printing press. Well, when we left off with class, um, we talked about some of the great inventions and really wonderful things that came out during the Renaissance. The most important invention of all time is the printing press. No doubt about it. The printing press was so important that it did these three things. Number one, it decreased the cost of printing materials. All right? That means printed books and other materials, such as maps and other pamphlets and publications, are going to increase, they're going to be cheaper, and they're going to be more readily available to the general populace. That leads us to number two, is that it improves the supply of books and materials. And that ultimately is going to lead us to number three, which is the most important point here. So make sure you bold it, highlight it, or underline it. And that is that the printing press is going to increase literacy and spread ideas throughout Europe. The best thing I could equate this to is Twitter today. Uh, you guys use Twitter pretty frequently to communicate ideas and express things. Well, the printing press was the Twitter of its day. So much so that in the 1520s, uh, a, a Catholic monk named Martin Luther will use the printing press to spread his ideas about Protestantism and the Protestant faith. And there's our example of a printing press, an engraving of a printing press. All right, take a look at this map. In the upper left-hand corner, we have what Europe looked like in 1450. There was one printing press throughout Europe. All right, take a look at on the right-hand side of your screen. There's one printing press in France, four in Germany, four in the city-states of Italy. Ten years later, in 1470, those numbers increased. There's still maybe three or four in France. Spain gets a printing press. The printing press breaks out in Germany and Italy. And then by 1480, take a look at that, there's all sorts of printing presses all spreading throughout Central Europe. And then, by the end of the... 1500s. You guys can see here's the printing press in 1490, and this is by 1500. These are towns with printing presses. Huge revolutions in printing press. And every if your town had a printing press, that meant you were pretty educated in a pretty fortunate town. You were a center of learning, which is the epitome of the Renaissance. So three Renaissance writers that we're going to focus on uh, for this uh, section. Actually, we're going to focus on four, but our first one is Niccolo Machiavelli, and you guys should remember from last week that Machiavelli wrote The Prince, and he argued that rulers should do whatever is in their power in order to maintain – or excuse me, whatever is in their power to maintain their power. The next writer we have is Diedrich Erasmus, and Erasmus encouraged that the Bible be printed in what's called vernacular. And this was – he wanted people to read the Bible, but the problem was the Bible was still being printed in Latin, and most commoners and poor people could not read Latin. So Erasmus er, encouraged the pope to start printing the Bibles in common vernacular, and that allowed people to, again, read more and become more literate as far as religious matters were concerned. And then obviously the father of the printing press, Gutenberg, uh, his – like we just said, his uh, invention leads to the expansion of literacy throughout Europe. Another Renaissance writer we're going to talk about is Miguel de Cervantes, and he wrote a book called Don Quixote. And Don Quixote is the story it's – a, it's a comedy. It's about an old man who believes he is a knight, and he actually goes around chasing windmills thinking that it is a noble cause. It's actually a very excellent book. Uh, Miguel de Cervantes is pictured there at the bottom of your screen. But what's real interesting is that this picture here on the left-hand side of your screen, that is a painting that was done in the 20th century by another famous artist. So this is not a Renaissance piece, but that artist was none other than Pablo Picasso, and this is 
uh, Don Quixote and his his trusty companion Pancho Sanchez. And that painting is actually in the back of uh, our classroom. Finally, probably the most notable uh, of the Renaissance writers is, is William Shakespeare. He's regarded as perhaps the greatest playwright of all time. He is credited for developing hundreds of new words. Almost 1,500 words were, were formed because of Shakespeare's contributions to the English language. He wrote his plays for Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth I, during the Elizabethan age. His famous works include Julius Caesar, Henry V, Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer's Night's Dream. And the best part about Shakespeare is the fact that his works are still performed today. Uh, many actors and actresses will uh, relish the opportunity to perform in a, a real, real life Shakespearean play, uh, and his theater, the Globe Theater, is still around. Even though a fire destroyed it uh, in the 1800s, it was rebuilt, remodeled, uh, and looking quite spectacular. And you can still see plays at there today. Uh, so that concludes our discussion of kind of northern renaissance writers you can go back replay uh, the video if you need to catch up on some of the notes you can download the powerpoint but make sure you have that first page of your cornell notes we've done the effects of printing the renaissance writers and the world of shakespeare all righty great job guys